All right, friends. Well, it's wonderful to have you here today, and welcome to Oklahoma Baptist University. It is a sheer delight to uh, share this time with you and to celebrate not only Black History Month here at OBU, but also an, an extraordinary uh, moment in the history of, of our university. As you know, uh, a, a couple of years ago, uh, I got to meet a powerhouse of a leader, and her name is Beverly Glover. And she came here to give a lecture at OBU. Uh, we shared a meal together, talked a little bit more, shared with her a little bit about uh, what we were trying to do here at OBU in terms of uh, uh, kingdom diversity and some of the vision that we had. And uh, it was very clear to me that BJ not only resonated with this, but also wanted to take the university beyond where it ever had been before. And in the course of that time, under Dr. Uh, under Beverly's uh, leadership, uh, OBU continues to grow. We have more room to grow, but we're continuing to grow and develop in kingdom diversity. And as we celebrate uh, Black History Month particularly, one of the things that we want to do is to celebrate those moments that maybe have been forgotten, but are momentous occasions in the history of our university where we have been touched and blessed by leaders who have gone before us and absolutely made an impact, a kingdom impact that has lasting effects. And so as part of our Black uh, History Month celebration here at OBU, today we have the distinct honor of celebrating and honoring one of our own, Walter O. Mason, Jr., who was the first black professor at OBU, listen to this, in 1968. He was the first black tenured professor at OBU in 1973. Now, the office of the president, my office, in partnership with OBU's Black Student Association and the Office of University Culture here, are pleased to host you as our honored guests in today's activities. Uh, I'd like to give a couple of special acknowledgments to some, uh, some folks who have made this happen. First of all, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Beverly Glover for her work, so let's thank her. And you know, uh, students, I, I think know this, we do have a library here, right? <laughs> And we also have, you may not know this, a university archive. And in the university archive, we host and we uh, curate all of the history of our university, all 112 years of it. And so I'd like to take a moment and uh, recognize two extraordinary leaders on our campus. First, first of all, the director of uh, our library, uh, Ms. Julie Rankin, who's here with us and then our new university archivist, Joshua Mackey, because both of them uh, did some heavy lifting to make today possible and to curate and craft this extraordinary exhibit. So please thank uh, Joshua Mackey as well as Julie Rankin. In addition to uh, these who have made this possible, you know, we have the opportunity to celebrate some extraordinary folk who have uh, made their way here to celebrate with us. Let me just mention, we have uh, some folk from uh, Dr. Mason's family here, so would you please stand and be recognized? Let's thank them for being here. We also have some of uh, Dr. Mason's contemporaries. Uh, we have retired professors, we have alums, and uh, part of uh, some of the folks on Dr. Mason's staff. So if you could please stand and be recognized. Farthings, et cetera, Dr. Parrish, it's great to have you here. So what are we doing this morning? Well, today we are going to celebrate an extraordinary exhibit that honors uh, Walter Mason. And this exhibit is going to stand in his honor, not just here, but then as a permanent exhibit in our university library. And then we're going to make two special presentations. And then later this afternoon, we'll introduce our guests and participants at a panel discussion in Stavros Hall. That's later this afternoon, uh, featuring some of our, our guests and our OBU staff. 
We also trust that today you'll learn something a little bit more about our history. You'll learn a little bit more about what God continues to do and how we continue to grow as a university. Now, I would be remiss not to mention some of our dignitaries who are here. Uh, not just Lori Hagens, right in the back there. Thank you so much for being here. Not just some of our uh, professors, but do you know uh, a lot of this was uh, launched through a relationship between uh, Beverly Glover and Congressperson Nikki Nice, who is here with us. Uh, Nikki, would you mind standing? And OBU, let's welcome her. And. Uh, We'll be recognizing the formal uh, gifts that you've provided through this relationship in just a minute. But thank you so much for being here, and thank you for the contribution to the legacy of this extraordinary man at OBU. So, with all that said, friends, welcome to Bison Hill, and welcome to this distinct moment in the history of our university. And with no further ado, I'd like to uh, let you meet Beverly Glover. Beverly. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. I, I say to everybody, this is the best boss I've ever had. And I'm not just saying that. And I've worked for 50 years, so I've had several bosses. It's the best boss I've ever had. Very supportive of what we're doing here and authentic about wanting things to change. As a diversity practitioner, I have several clients who want to appear to be addressing diversity, but they don't really want anything to change. That's not Dr. Thomas. So thank you. I say that every chance I get. Well, gosh, I am... Uh, <laughs> I'm delighted to be here this morning with everybody and to see all these faces. I um, learned about Professor Mason. I did not know about him until uh, Councilwoman Nikki Nice approached me at a community event and said that she and her mom, who is here, hi mom, um, had gone to an estate sale in Northeast Oklahoma City. It turned out to be Professor Mason's home. And so they found these artifacts in there, original newspaper articles from back in 1968, OBU hires first black professor. And so she said to me, she wanted to donate that to the university. I don't know if you want these or not. And Dr. Thomas was like, of course we want that. As Dr. Thomas mentioned though, the moment I showed those to our library folks, they just went nuts and just started a research that has just been unending. And I'm so excited about their enthusiasm. It's their enthusiasm that let us end up with an actual exhibit to unveil today. So I'm grateful to them. Um, during this process also, I'm telling you, uh, the Lord has been engineering things for this because it was just a few days ago that we started this because we just found out about the family. Um, we didn't even know, and uh, most of them were in Oklahoma City. And so I, I had this list, and I called the first name on the list, and it turned out to be somebody I actually knew. I didn't realize that. I hadn't seen her in 30 years or whatever, but uh, so we knew each other, and, and, you know, so that was already made. But I just wanted to share with you guys, there were several family members who were planning to be here today. I want you to be in prayer for the Mason family. Because uh, Linda Mason, who was married to Walter Mason Jr., I mean the third, because this is Walter Mason Jr., the third, uh, called me the other day to say that her son, Kelly Mason, who was planning to be here, is in the hospital in a coma. He had a heart attack over the weekend. He's only uh, 48 years old. Anyway, we are in prayer for the family because they're waiting for him to open his eyes. Um, Rosaria uh, told me, uh, Alexia, Amber, <laughs> okay, Amber Jones, who has a daughter named that, okay, Amber Jones, who I just met this morning, is the n great niece of Walter Mason, and she told me this morning the encouraging news that um, Kelly uh, has had some movement and so, you know, I said, well, it should, because I already pl prayed about it, so, I mean, <laughs> it's done. Anyway, so that is why a number of the family members who plan to be here are not here today. Um, we are videotaping this so that we can have this for all posterity. Uh, we will, I will be distributing this video, uh, posting it on YouTube, distributing it to people in the community, and then I'm going to place it on the University Culture webpage 
OBU webpage, and that way it'll be there all the time and people can go back and refer to it. So I'm just delighted uh, to be able to do this. And But I want you to hear from our Director of Library Services, uh, Julie Rankin. I think Dr. Thomas already said what you were going to say, but come on, Julie. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome. Um, I'm, I'm Julie Rankin, the Director of Library Services here, and it has been amazing to see this exhibit come together and to learn more about um, Mr. Walter Mason and his incredible life of service dedicated to equity and education. I'm so proud of the collaborative effort by so many. Um, when Beverly B.J. Glover came into my office carrying the, the scrapbook, the diploma, and other artifacts, um, from Mr. Mason's home, I quickly realized that this man has a story that needed to be shared and honored. Um, reading through his file with BJ and our OBU archives and discovering the tenure letter that is on display in this exhibit that you will soon see was such a special experience for me. I know that there will be more to add to the Walter O. Mason Jr. collection as we continue to uncover information and people related to this remarkable individual. The OBU Library is full of stories from ancient times around the world to modern day stories from right here on Bison Hill. And I would like to keep Walter O. Mason's story alive on our campus and in our community by, as Dr. Thomas said, I'm installing this exhibit as a permanent display in the OBU Library after it has been featured in the Geiger Center this month. And my hope is that students, employees, and visitors to our library and campus will be inspired by Walter Mason's accomplishments and life and support of kingdom diversity through his, this exhibit for years to come. Our university archivist, Joshua Mackey, has done an incredible job of pulling together the story of Walter Mason into this exhibit you will see before you today. His background in museum work and as a historian and curator, coupled with his deep connection and enthusiasm for OBU as an alum, truly revived Walter Mason's story and, and life. Please welcome Joshua Mackey as he shares more about this exhibit. Thank you. Thank you, Julie, for the introduction. Uh, just so you know, as she said, I have a background as a historian. And I have been sharing endlessly with my colleagues and my friends about all of the work that's gone into this and all of my enthusiasm about this project. Um, I am great at giving a good lecture, but I've been asked to keep this short. So I'll be sticking to my notes. So uh, thank you for every, uh, to everybody for coming. Uh, it's a blessing to be back at my alma mater, uh, preserving OBU's history and sharing it with you today. Uh, when this project started, none of us had any idea where it was going to go. Um, I expected a modest opening over at the library with a handful of staff and students and professors, and I'm absolutely thrilled to see everybody who's come in uh, to uh, enjoy this with us today. Um, I was also unsure how the exhibit itself would work, uh, not sure what content would be available, uh, what I'd be working with in order to put this together, uh, but it all really started coming together whenever I started going through the uh, diploma, his uh, master's degree, because that actually set the timeline for his career, which really got me excited. So he actually uh, graduated from Oklahoma State in uh, 1953, and Brown versus the Board of Education was 1954. So one of the things that's really important with Oklahoma history is that Oklahoma had several major precedent uh, legal cases that set in place the uh, dismantling of segregation in uh, the United States. Um, so through desegregating universities, that started the process of being able to bring us together here today. And so um, being able to trace some of that history and provide some of that context is something I'm incredibly thrilled by. Um, and his continued work at OBU and later at the University of Oklahoma to provide, make sure that uh, education is available to all is a continuation of that civil rights work. Um, with that context in mind, uh, this exhibit features a brief uh, biography on Walter Mason alongside documents and artifacts from his career. It also includes some background details on civil rights in Oklahoma and uh, here on Bison Hill. 
to provide so that we can provide some context on Mason's story. This exhibit uh, merely scratches the surface of this deep, rich history, which is worthy of continued exploration. Um, I was also fortunate to receive help from a current OBU student. So whenever I was walking through uh, kind of the setup for the exhibit with uh, some of the library staff, one of our student workers let me know that there was a student who actually wrote a paper on uh, the civil rights at OBU in the fall of, of 2020. And so I reached out to him and he, uh, he agreed to send his paper along to me. And I was impressed with his work, so I actually asked him to co-author a panel with me. So uh, Joshua Morgan, if you would stand up real quick. Uh, so I really appreciate the work that you did on this. And he managed to sum his entire paper up in about 200 words, which is a lot of work. Um, so I'm appreciative of that, and it's really a testament to how relevant Mason's story is and how relevant uh, civil rights history is to our current students. And so it's been a blessing to be able to have that collaboration as well. Uh, finally, I want to bring two uh, features of this exhibit to everybody's attention whenever it's unveiled. So there will be two placards on top of the case that will have QR codes. Uh, one will have uh, a digital version of the exhibit, which you'll be able to open on your phone. Um, it also, that uh, same exhibit features text-to-speech, so anybody who has vision impairments, you'll be able to actually listen to the exhibit. Um, on the other side, uh, there will be a QR code for a feedback form. Uh, I plan on doing more exhibits like this in the future, and I could really use your feedback on what works and what doesn't, and recommendations on other things to look into. So without further ado, it's my honor to present the exhibit on Walter Mason, OBU's first uh, black faculty, mem faculty member. Well, we sure want to thank <laughs> I didn't even remember that he was a doctor. Everybody looks so young to me, right? Uh, <laughs> I want to thank him for adding the technology feature to our little exhibit here. It's like, well, wow, let's do the, do the uh, QR code and give your feedback. I encourage you to actually do that, actually. And, um, and I'm glad he's made it uh, more accessible for people. So this is wonderful. I want you to know that as an outcome of this research project, two things that we will be doing out of the Office of University Culture. One is, today, I'm establishing the Walter O. Mason, Jr. Kingdom Diversity Hall of Fame. We will recognize each year someone who has made an outstanding contribution to Kingdom Diversity. By the way, here at OBU, we do Kingdom Diversity as opposed to some of the things you're seeing in the secular world. We're standing on the word of God. We use biblical uh, values for our diversity initiative here. I want you to know that. And so when we say kingdom diversity, I'm talking about what we read in Revelation about people from all tribes and kindreds and nations and tongues. That is our focus uh, for kingdom diversity here. So we will be doing this from now on, starting next year, uh, recognizing uh, outstanding contributors to this field. The second thing is, Doing this uh, project made us realize we have some big gaps in our history here at the university because I'm finding out from people I've met who tell me, oh, there's this person who was here who did this and this person did that and they're right over in Dell City. They're here in Shawnee. They're over in Oklahoma City. You ought to check with those people. And I'm so grateful for that. And then we have an alum who came back to work here who's saying, oh, yeah, when I was here, there was this black student who now is this big wickety wick person up in New York. We need to <laughs> reach them. And so we want to go back and document this history because back in that time, we just weren't tracking things that way, the way we are today. So that's the second project that will be an outcome of this exhibit. Um, we do need to recognize a couple of people here. So, Dr. Thomas, if you'll join me here, because um, there'll be a couple of photo ops. So, if you want to yes. do that one. 
So uh, again, uh, much of what we're experiencing today is due to the impetus of uh, Councilperson Nikki Nice, whose uh, extraordinary kindness of even thinking about OBU and reaching out uh, to Beverly has enabled us to enrich this project. And you'll see in the exhibit, it's just, it's phenomenal. So uh, Councilperson Nikki Nice, thank you so much. And could you join us? We have a certificate of appreciation to you. Okay, this is a photo op. Come on, you guys. Uh, Brock, where is Brock? So, uh, please, how, how can we get all of us in here? Yeah, just direct us. You, you just tell squeeze us what we in. Brock, by the way. Thank you. You don't have to stand here, but if you want to, you yes, can. Yes, please do. Yes, please do. Thank you. Well, first of all, good morning. What a day to celebrate a man I had no idea changed the trajectory of this campus. When I got online, I was just on Instagram, and I followed this guy that does estate sales. And I was like, ooh, that one's in, around the corner. I'm going to that. And I said, Mama, you want to go? And we got in the car, and we went. And when we got in the house... All I could see was books. It was books everywhere. Books everywhere. And I just saw people grabbing stuff. And that was one of the first things I grabbed was this. His, his, he did this. This Dr. Mason tracked his own history because he knew he was making it. And I could not leave without that book. I knew there was something about his history that was going to set something not only in me ablaze, but our city and our history that we have yet to still uncover. So when I, I saw that, I grabbed it, I grabbed all the newspapers because he was his own, again, his own historian. He had the Black Dispatch from that time period. He had other newspaper articles from that time period. I grabbed his, um, I still have his Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated certificate from 1946 at Langston University. And I'm going to return that to Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. This is why we have to celebrate our history. We have to make sure people know about it because this gentleman, he passed away, and my generation had no idea. My generation had no idea of the commitment he made to diversity and equity in education on my behalf, in your behalf, in this university's behalf. And I know it wasn't easy for him during that time frame, just looking at some of the other pictures that I saw and he referenced where he was and, and what was going on. He took a picture in front of the Capitol or the White House, I believe it was the White House. White House and he wrote down and documented on the back of that picture what was happening on that day. Who was coming out of the, cap of the White House on that day. So he was marking his own history so I had to celebrate him and I'm so thankful that the university embraced the story and his commitment to diversity here. So thank you very much, Ms. Glover. Thank you, President, uh, for this magnificent uh, gift of just telling his story. That's your gift to me is telling his story. And I, I get emotional and I'm sorry, I don't know him, but now we all will. Yeah. And that's what touches me about People like Dr. Mason, his story gets to live on. And when people pass away, that's all you get. It's up to us to keep their history and their stories alive. So I appreciate you, OBU, for doing that. I feel like I'm his granddaughter and his great niece. Um, so thank you for being here. And I know um, even I'm with, with Ms. Linda Mason, I didn't realize I knew her. I served alongside her. Um, on a, on a board, and I had no idea this was his sister. So it's those kind of stories that we have yet to still tell. So I'll stop there, but thank you so much for this opportunity to be with you. And I told my mom, this is my first time on this campus. And it's not the last, not the last but it was the best day for me to be here to celebrate 
um, Dr. Mason. So thank you so much. Uh, and you know, students who are in the in the room, uh, you, you know, why do we remember, and why do we, uh, why is history important? Uh, one of the reasons is as we retrieve the past, it helps us renew the present and relaunch our futures. And that's absolutely true. Uh, we can learn, we can grow, and we can we can learn obviously from mistakes of the past. Uh, but it, it can also help us launch forward in our future. And, um, you know, I think there are some people who do great things, and that's commendable. There are some people who risk great things. And when I think about Walter Mason, I think about someone who risked great things, some things that you don't know about Walter Mason. Do you know he, he launched this incredible scholarship uh, that's known all over the nation now. And you may not know this, but you should. And this was one of your professors here at OBU. Risked great things, risked much to see uh, this extraordinary work advance. And so we celebrate today. Uh, one of the things that we'd also like to do, uh, not only to uh, appreciate and thank Councilwoman Nice, We'd also uh, like to offer a commemorative plaque to the family uh, just to mark this moment in the history of your university, to recognize the gift of um, the Mason family to OBU. And so if you don't mind, would you join us? Join. Amber, thank you so much for being here. And we'll get up here. No, 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 this is yours. It's not for me. Yes, we can. You, you direct us. We don't know what we're doing. Thank you. Good. Good. All right. Uh, thank you. And now what I'd like to do, you know, OBU uh, has a Black Student Association here at OBU. It's been here for uh, decades, Brock. And so uh, our Black Student Association president, Brock Brown, is here. Our uh, faculty advisor, Dr. Scott Lloyd, is here. Everybody wave. Uh, Scott, could you raise your hand so everybody can see you? Uh, Brock, would you please uh, welcome, greet us, please. Certainly. Certainly. Once again, I want to say good morning to each and every one of you that is here. I don't know what to say. I don't know, think it's the Baptist in me, but it's. Uh, but I feel like saying this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. My, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Brock Brown. I'm a junior. I am a junior here at Bison, on Bison Hill, majoring in musical arts while minoring in education. And it is my honor and privilege to serve as the president of the Black Student Association here on campus. I don't know who told Dr. Thomas to look at my notes, but <laughs> but he but he said pretty much everything that I was gonna say. But I, but I, but I'll say my piece if that's all right with you. <laughs> In three minutes, right, 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 right. So as I was uh, preparing for this Black History Black History Month event, so that's in particular the Mason the Walter Mason exhibit, I uh, began to reflect on this certain word that was taught to me by my former youth pastor back in Oklahoma City. And the word that, um, that I reflected on was the word Sankofa, which was what uh, Dr. Thomas just got through t discussing. So Sankofa is an African word from the uh, Aiken tribe in Ghana. The literal translation of the word and the symbol is literally, it is not taboo to fetch what is at risk of being left behind. Uh, the importance of reaching back to knowledge gained, or reaching back to knowledge gained in the past and bringing it into the present in order to make positive progress. And I believe as we stand here this morning on Bison Hill, honoring the life and legacy of Walter Mason Jr. and many other black figures who we have yet to find out, uh, it is my belief that this definition of Sankofa is in full effect on this morning. We have looked back into the past for this knowledge, 
brought this knowledge to the present for Bison Hill and others to see and seek to look towards the future, towards positive progress. Let's keep on going. So with that being said, we are so, in, we are so uh, inspired by your presence here on this morning. Uh, we are also inspired by the uh, artifacts that are in this case, including uh, a picture of the very first uh, black group on this campus known as the OBU Afro-American Society, which was the precursor group to what is now known today as the Black Student Association from 1968 to 1969. And the celebration does not stop here. It's, it continues on throughout the day and it will certainly keep on going throughout, uh, throughout, it, throughout eternity, really. Uh, please join us this afternoon uh, for a panel discussion in Staff Rose Hall over here, Staff Rose Hall room 214 from 1.15 to 2.30 p.m. And with that being said, thank you personally from the bottom of my heart for coming here to being and sharing with us being a part of this wonderful experience in history. God bless you. He didn't say he was a reverend, but he just acts like one, right? So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Thomas, for your support. Thanks to everybody who contributed to this. So far, you are not done yet. So thank you all for coming. I'm just thrilled to see you. And uh, we will dismiss from here. And uh, we'll see, hopefully, most of you at 115 over at Stavros for the panel discussion. And that's where we will introduce our special guest there. Thank you so much. You are excused. <laughs>